here where we have been sailing the last four years it's usually friggin cold and I have noticed that even in more temperate climates people make mistakes with what they wear when sailing. So on this video I'm gonna share all of my clothing tricks and also some money saving tips and no matter how experienced you are I'm pretty sure you're gonna learn something new. All right, let's start and let's start with the base layer and this is where you can already make a pretty expensive mistake. So you go to a store and you've been hearing about merino wool and everyone's ra raving about merino base layers and that's you know also my preferred choice of material for a base layer and you go and you buy something that's called merino pro or merino extreme or maybe something like powered by merino this and that but then afterwards you go home and you check the package the actual description on the package and you notice it only contains 10 or 20 percent of actual merino wool and then the rest is going to be something like polyester or polypropylene which means plastic and um, a synthetic or a plastic base layer can also be good but uh, if you went to uh, buy merino then that's not what you got that time the merino the best qualities about it are that um, it doesn't stink up so even if you wear the same base layer for multiple days um, the smell is going to be a lot less worse than it would be with a synthetic material and then um, it also feels really nice against your skin even when damp and it is actually also warmer against your skin compared to a synthetic material um, when it's damp. So those are some of the main good qualities about Merino. Then there are also some bad qualities about Merino. One of them is that uh, merino is not very resistant to chafing. It's not actually very durable on its own. So that's why a lot of manufacturers add something, add some kind of a synthetic material to their base layers. So this base layer here, for example, is around 70% merino wool and 30% um, polypropylene. And I think that's a good combination. But if you start getting into the territory where you are all, it's only 30% merino, then it's not really a merino base layer anymore, and you are not really getting the use of the, pro, you know, of the actual merino properties. So what are the other pro tips about merino base layers? Well, one of them is for sure, don't buy them too small. Um, these are examples of what's going to happen if you buy them too small. You know, I, they have like ripped, they are ripped at the knees, these are pants, huge holes at the knees in both of these, and um, also in the <laughs> crotch area. Because if you buy them like pretty tight, then they are going to eventually rip um, in some of the like high stretch areas, because Merino doesn't really take well to stretching and shave. So, you know, what I'm wearing now is actually pretty cool, good. It's a little bit loose. Also, the pants are a little bit loose. They are a bit elastic, so you can't see it. Usually, you know, I try to avoid bulk. So when it comes to base and uh, mid layers, then I don't want to have like really loose items. But um, when it comes to Merino, definitely don't buy them too small. The second tip would be that I try to have base layers that are reasonably thin. I don't like to have very thick base layers even when it's cold. I prefer to get the warmth from the other layers like the mid layer and the layers um, on top of that. And uh, that also makes the base layer more multifunctional. Then you can use it for hiking and other activities as well. And the base layer, you know, it's something, a merino base layer is something that we wear practically all the time, like say seven or eight months out of the year. 
So we have a lot of experience about this. And that's why the third tip would be that if you wear the base layer a lot, then it really pays out to have like two or three of them. Because the most important thing about staying warm is actually staying dry. And this is where people go wrong. You know, they are maybe out on the watch um, outside in an unprotected cockpit or whatever. And then they get cold and they come back inside and they have their, you know, rest. They have a couple hours of rest. Someone else is on the watch. And what you people usually do is they put more clothes on or they go inside their sleeping bag. And I think that's a wrong approach. Whenever I'm cold and kind of clammy and, and so on, then I usually try to change to dry clothes, especially if I'm stopping an activity and I know that I won't be um, sweating or getting wet after that moment. So I usually have three base layers at the ready, so to say. There's one that I'm wearing and then there is the one that I was wearing previously and I hung it out, I hung it up to dry somewhere um, inside the boat. And then whenever I have the chance, I change base layers. I put the previous one to, you know, I put the current one to dry and uh, put the previous one on. And then I have the third um, base layer that I use for sleeping, for actual sleeping in the harbors, you know, um, or at an anchorage when we are not sailing. So I have three base layers that I'm kind of like recycling between uses. I almost forgot to talk about socks, but socks are very important. So for the first pair of socks that I usually wear, um, I wear merino hiking or skiing socks. And um, here it has to be some kind of a merino mix. So there has to be some kind of synthetic material in there as well, because in my experience, 100% merino socks just um, get holes in them pretty quickly and that's a little bit unfortunate. Then on top of the merino socks I wear Finnish handmade woolen socks and unfortunately I don't know where to get socks like these commercially. So you can see these are a little bit like oversized and they are like a pretty um, open weave so they are like pretty airy you know and uh, they breathe really well and they're made out of like pretty coarse um, wool thread so you don't get um, they don't wear through and um, I you know I have multiple pairs of those and they are made by usually I get them from family members or relatives um, and uh, I also do have some other stuff you know I have down booties and then I have like these shoes that I wear inside but I really do prefer the woolen socks over any of those because um, when you wear like down booties or something your your feet don't really get to breathe as much you know um, these just like I don't know these are just really comfortable and your feet stay um, really dry so if you can get something like this, that's what I really recommend. This is the mid layer and I am wearing traditional Finnish wool pants. Very sexy. I have a mid layer fleece jacket from Helly Hansen. And just as a small disclaimer, I have been working together with Helly Hansen for many years. We started before I even had this YouTube channel. Um, so while this is not a sponsored video, I'm not getting paid to do this video specifically and there's nothing in my contract or anywhere else saying that I would have to do a video. Um, I just wanted to put a disclaimer out there that I am affiliated with Heli Hansen and there's a lot of Heli Hansen gear on this video. But like you might have already noticed, uh, this advice or these tips, they apply to pretty much all clothing brands. So let's move on forward. The fleece jacket is um, something that's a pretty good choice for 
especially if you are like bud budget conscious because you might have already noticed that when it comes to even just the base layers you buy you buy two pairs of um, merino pants and a couple of merino shirts and it's already kind of expensive like clothing just is expensive so while i definitely would say that you should like invest in good base layers then the mid layer is something where you can maybe save a little bit of money because when it comes to the mid layer you can do with um, just normal fleece the fleece basically means plastic you know this jacket here is going to be 100% um, uh, polypropylene or polyester and um, while that so might sound bad the good thing about fleece is that it's basically forever a jacket a well-made fleece jacket or fleece pants they're going to last for a very very long time they are basically never never going to break i mean this one i've been wearing for several years and it's too i mean it looks like it lo looks like new you know and i also wear this when i go ski touring um quite often i don't even wear a jacket uh, i put my outer shell jacket in my backpack and i just wear this and i have like my backpack on and everything and you know you can't you can't see anything you, like there's no uh, physical defects with this at all so they do definitely last for quite a long time and i really like this uh no name i don't know what brand this is but this is like wool pants that um, we bought from finland and um, i really like these wool pants and they have like the same kind of qualities as merino these are also going to be more warm than um, fleece pants but you know if you don't have a chance to get something like this then just get um, normal fleece pants you know these are actually at least 10 years old these fleece pants and i'm still wearing them and there's nothing wrong with them and um, they are just fine and you might now notice um, something also with these clothes is that you can get mid layers that come with hoods and they come with all kinds of like Mm, you know pockets and and so on but i like to keep it very simple when it comes to mid layers because um, all of that stuff adds up bulk and especially a hood is something that i don't want to have in my mid layers because the hood is something that is going to be present in the outer layer your shell and that's all you need and then you have, if you have multiple hoods it's gonna make your head movement a little bit awkward because you're gonna have a bunch of stuff around your neck and I don't want that especially if you have long hair like I do then it's gonna get pretty awkward pretty quickly so I try to design all of my clothing so that you know it's as that there's as little bulk as possible and that make also again makes it more multifunctional I can use this for lots of different kinds of stuff then let's go further and add one more layer this is the one piece of gear that even if you are on a budget and you want to buy like something sailing specific then sailing pants good sailing pants is probably the first piece of gear that i would buy when we get to this outerwear sections this is where things are starting to differ a little bit so what i'm wearing here is the Helly Hansen Egir Ocean uh, pants and this is kind of the Helly Hansen top of the line um, ocean sailing <laughs> pants and I have the I have the same jacket when you get to the outerwear you just kind of have to decide what is the level of um, protection from the elements that you need so some of the elements that you're gonna have in pants like this are going to be you know first of all um it's a salopette or whatever you call it so it goes like all the way up here it's not just uh, like you know it's not just until here and then something to hold them hold them up but it goes all the way up here 
you have a huge like a really super sturdy waterproof zipper here and then even under the zipper you know you have like one layer like this to keep the water out then some of my absolute favorite features are um, these rubber things here on your butt you have rubber here and you have padded um, knee pad knee pads here with rubber here you can take the knee pads out as well if you like to and these are super useful when you are sitting down in the cockpit and it's wet or if you are crawling on the cockpit and it's wet because no matter what kind of super duper high-tech um, uh, outer shell you have then it is going to let water inside if you sit in a puddle and in a situation like this um, you are going to need something like this where it's just just actual rubber because when you are sitting or leaning against something then the high-tech uh, high-tech shell material it doesn't work anymore and the water will get through it so while this uh, these pants they have the you know the helitech um, layer or the shell layer which is waterproof even this one um, you know it's compar comparable to Gore-Tex it does not um, work if you are sitting on it and if there's something wet underneath so not all of the pants come with features like this but it's kind of like up to you to decide what you need uh, I think the good thing about these pants is and even even about the jacket is that um, even though they are kind of like the highest level of protection from the elements they are still pretty nimble and it's still just a shell so I wear these pants um, when I'm also when I'm like summer sailing in the Nordics then I just wear less stuff underneath I just wear a very thin base layer underneath all right so if you sail in more temperate climate than I do then you might not need any more warmth you might just need this stuff and then you put on your jacket but me um, I still get cold with just this so I need a little bit more warmth so this is what I use um, quite often and it's one of my most used pieces of a clothing and well actually I use all of my clothing quite a bit because what you are seeing today is actually the all all pretty much all of the clothing and outerwear that I have because I'm using the same jackets also in the city and um, this is pretty much all I have but this is um, a light down jacket and uh, it's kind of like uh, you can use it as a mid layer under your shell jacket or you can use it as an outer layer and I use this like all the time just to go to the grocery store or when we go hiking or ski touring I put it in my backpack and then I can take it out when you are when we are having a break or if the weather turns bad and when I'm sailing I use it in a, like a warmer weather as just like it like this and sometimes I put a um, shell jacket on top and uh, as you can see I don't have a hood and that's what one thing that I mentioned earlier I don't want to have a hood in this jacket because I'm often going to put another jacket on top and then if I have a hood here already then it's gonna make me less mobile and I don't like that uh, so this is really multifunctional and the bad thing of course for sailing is that this is a real down jacket so if it does get wet then it's not warm anymore and also down doesn't really warm up as down doesn't really dry up that easily so if you are looking for something that is just for sailing then it's maybe better to look into a synthetic filling if you do go for down then make sure that it's certified and animal cruelty free 
The other bad thing about a puffy jacket like this for sailing is that you easily get holes in them. This one is pretty old already and there's plenty of small holes that I should patch up. The good thing is that they come usually with a kit for patching them up, just small pieces of like this kind of tape. If you use this as an outer um, jacket for sailing then you can kind of expect to get some holes. Okay, then the other jackets that I wear, um, I might, like I said, I might leave this underneath and this one I can also wear underneath the, underneath the pants, but um, I'm not gonna do that right now because I would get just way too hot. Well, sometimes I wear my heavy puffy jacket and well, this one, like you see, I have patched it up. I didn't have um, black duct tape available so I had to use the silver one this time so I have a um, bit of a hole there and this one well I use this also when sailing sometimes this one does have a hood because it's the outermost layer that I'm uh, ever going to wear this one doesn't really I mean it would fit inside the sailing jacket but it just gets too bulky for me at that point so in practice I don't really do that and um, like you might have noticed with the other down jacket as well, this one has also seen some uh, salty water, so it's not quite as puffy anymore and it looks a little bit, you know, it's just the colors are not quite there anymore because these are quite old. Also a little bit dirty, you know, you maybe noticed we haven't seen a washing machine in a while. So yeah this is something that i wear when it's not raining and when it's just cold and quite often when it is really cold then um it's uh just you know it's not gonna rain then it's gonna snow if anything so then this is something that i can wear but uh, to be honest for most people this is not gonna be like a you know, if you sail anywhere sensible then you're not gonna probably not gonna need anything like this okay then what about uh, shell jackets like I said I think the trousers are the most important thing if you are on a budget and then you can get by or you can um, you can do really well with just a ski jacket and that's what I also use quite quite often so this is the Odin shell jacket um, from um, Heli Hansen and I use this for both ski touring and um, and for sailing. I usually have it like more available somewhere closer and so on than where my sailing jacket is. So I wear this quite often when sailing as well. But of course it doesn't have the same um, qualities as the sailing jacket has. It's not quite as waterproof and um, you know, if you look at the zipper in comparison, for example, to the uh, sailing jacket or this zipper, you know, um, it's like a different world. But if you do use a sailing jacket, uh, sorry, a ski jacket or other jacket for, for sailing, um, then it's quite nice to have a jacket that's a little bit longer. You know, if it's like a really short jacket, then the wind will get underneath easier and so on. I like to have jackets that are like a little bit longer. I find them um, more more multifunctional. So, you know, a ski jacket with a large hood is gonna do pretty well um, also for, for sailing. Let's take the jacket then and you will notice the difference. So this is, this is the Aegir Ocean um, sailing jacket which is the kind of the top of the line ocean sailing jacket from uh, Heli Hansen and well first of all you have this skirt here that blocks the wind stops it from you know getting up and uh, also will stop any remainder spray seawater spray from getting inside the jacket and then you have this really kind of massive um, zipper here to zip it all up. 
and again a big hood and some of the special features so you have these I don't know what they are called but these rubber gaiters for your hands and these are really nice because they will stop um, seawater from drenching your um, shirt so what usually happens is you work on something that's wet either with your gloves on or without gloves and then you do something else with your hands and the and the water is going to you know obviously uh, go along your skin and end up uh, drenching your shirt so this will completely stop that you know you can even put your hands into a bucket of water and you will not get a drop inside and it, when you have gloves you know you will wear them put them gloves like here in between these two then as you might have noticed this jacket is kind of long it uh, goes uh, down all the way to like past my butt and again it's rubber here so when I have both the pants and the jacket on and I'm sitting in the wet cockpit on Sylvia then I have like two layers of rubber that I'm sitting on and it's just uh, very comfortable and uh, especially waterproof and that's the most important thing and then we have the hood and you know for any normal person this will be more than big enough but for me if I have my hair like this you know it's a little bit too small but um, that's just uh, the drawback of having having hair like this but you know it's super protective and you can kind of choose how you want to wear this thing here so if you want to like cover half of your face or not and it's also um, nice and comfy inside so you don't like scrape your chin which is sometimes a problem with jackets and it, that can be like really really annoying after a long time of course you have plenty of pockets and stuff and you know these pockets here in particular you can use them to warm up your hands even if you are wearing gloves they will fit inside here no problem but for me the most important features of this jacket are definitely these rubber things here um, they keep you dry even when things get a little bit um, rough and then just this overall length and this rubber padding here in the back let's move on forward to kind of the accessories or gloves and um, the boots so when it comes to gloves there is really no perfect option you know we haven't found the perfect option so far um, so there's multiple things that you can wear when you are just sitting around and not really touching anything wet you can wear ski gloves like this these are also from Heli Hansen and they are super um, comfortable and super warm and they are the Odin ski gloves then we also have I have these from Hestra and um, and these are like the three finger this is the three finger mitt also works uh, pretty well and then we use inner gloves like this also with uh, with these we use inner gloves that we put in and you know when when they get wet we take them out and dry them out but usually you know you have multiple gloves in circulation and um, the ski gloves are not really optimal because even though they are leather and then like a waterproof shell um, they don't really they don't they are not really waterproof anymore when you're actually touching and gripping wet things so when you're handling wet ropes and so on um, they will get wet and then they will eventually they will get destroyed like you might see from these Hestra gloves here so the um, leather will eventually 
degrade because of the salt water and so on and you will destroy them. So just be a little bit careful with the ski gloves. Then what we wear quite often are these uh, fishermen's gloves, uh, rubber gloves and then you just wear glove liners inside of those. Unfortunately we kind of gave them um, away because uh, we are not going to be like winter sailing on board Arctica anymore. Like you might know we are moving on to our next boat so we are giving stuff away so we gave those away but just rubber gloves like actual thick rubber with something that you can put inside is pretty good and then you can have these work gloves uh, winter work gloves that are also rubber just pure rubber outside and inside they might have like this fuzzy uh, lining and you can get those from hardware stores and they work pretty well especially if you buy them a little bit too big and then you wear a separate liner underneath what's common with those all of these rubber gloves is that they all do get wet inside uh, sooner or later you know uh, at the latest from your hands sweating they will get wet and then they take ages to dry so you also you know I would suggest getting a couple of pairs of those if you think you need something like that personally what I wear most of the time is uh, I wear these ski gloves uh, quite a bit it's not really good because they do wear out quite quickly like I said but what I do personally is that when I'm wet, handling wet things and snowy things I just take the gloves gloves off and I handle the wet things with my bare hands sure it's cold but if it only takes a while then you're gonna be fine you know your hand gets a little bit your hands get a little bit cold but then you just kind of dry them off a little bit and then put the nice and warm gloves back on that's how I handle that situation now what about the boots this is also something where we have not found a very good solution there are good solutions when you are sailing in somewhere that's a little bit warmer but when it actually gets like really cold then the sailing boots like neoprene boots or rubber boots they're just like a little bit too cold and um, I don't know there's solutions for those you know you can add liners inside and so on but what we are mostly using are these we are using Sorel winter boots um, they are pretty waterproof and uh, the good thing about this is that they have the removable felt inner shoe and um, then these are like really easy to dry and you can actually wear these separately inside just these and your woolen socks merino socks you can wear these inside and they are pretty pretty comfortable and nice so this is like a really good uh, thing about these boots but there are a lot of things that I don't like about wearing these boots when sailing one of them is that they don't really have like a good edge here so they um, are like really kind of slippery and if you step on something um, they kind of give away quite easily so you don't have like a good feeling of the deck and they're just kind of like unwieldy and cumbersome so if you have a better suggestion for actual real cold weather sailing boots then let us know because we are also still searching for the perfect solution and when it comes to hats I also have to disappoint you there because all of my hats are custom made so this one is just um, made, my, made by my friend it's two or three layers of thick wool and then I have added an elastic cord here to keep it like kind of snug against my ears so that the wind can't get in so easily and maybe if you are buying a hat 
then one thing that I would look for would be something that has like a layer of windproof fabric here at the lower portion just to keep the wind out but other than that just get a really thick hat or multiple hats so you can swap them out as they get wet I know that all of that gear especially if you are just starting out is really quite a lot and um, most people will never need that much gear for just sailing keep in mind that um, I myself only use I just use the sailing pants and the jacket purely for sailing all of the other stuff I use for lots of other different activities as well but if you are looking for sailing clothing then I think the most important pieces are the base layer you know pants and um, and a shirt and then sailing pants and sailing pants because that's something that you cannot really replace with hiking or skiing equipment sailing pants have like some unique characteristics and that's why, why I feel like that's like a good place to start if you are looking into investing into sailing clothing and also remember and keep in mind that clothing like this is actually an investment kind of into in the future for example my stuff if it's good quality clothing it's gonna last for a while so my all of my outerwear is several years old you know pretty much all of the stuff that I showed you is multiple years old and um, still doing really well and I have no plans to retire um, that stuff so for example the light down jacket and the sailing pants I've used for several hundreds of days each so it's something that's going to last for a while and I think that's also important because the single most important or the single best way to reduce the ecological footprint of our clothing is by actually using it for as long as possible before then getting rid of it so buy something that's you know as as high quality as you can afford and then you'll be happy and you'll be using it for a long time I hope that was useful for you and I hope you caught some tips on like what kind of features I like in my clothing and in the next video I think I will spill the beans about our next boat um, but other than that I will see you next time and if you are into sailing in cold destinations check out my heater video if you already haven't bye bye